waging war for personal gain and leaving death and destruction in their path earns the mercenary his ghastly reputation during the 1960s and 70s. It is a stigma that will not easily fade. The Westerners continue to wreak havoc on Africa and go relatively unchecked as the superpowers are engaged in an expanding Cold War. And this is the infamous period of the dogs of war the, and the terrible ones within the Congo. They're adventurers for the most case. They're people who are in there for a quick buck. In some cases, they have a lot of military experience. In other cases, they're guys with no military experience who just you know, are loud mouths and talk up what they can do. People like, you know, you have the Bob Denards and the, the Mycors who are basically Europeans who come in and work for whichever side pays them the most. Some of them believed in kind of the, the big man of history approach, and that is that a small group of capable individuals could help make history. Names such as Mad Mike Hoare became synonymous with coup d'etat, violent bush wars, and battles for the control of the mineral-rich provinces of Africa. The most famous was Five Commando, which worked in the Congo in the 60s. There were stories that Five Commando would set up recruiting stations outside of prisons. So when people came out of prisons, they would hire them and send them up to Congo. And so they get a real mixed bag of, of people coming in. And the result is that they also have a mixed outcome. In some cases, they are going against untrained local armies that flee at the first sight of these Westerners coming in with better equipment. And so they can hold down large zones with minimal amount of personnel. But the mercenary does not just fight battles for their clients. They set up their own personal fiefdoms in the Congo and become rivals for power in the region, leaving in their wake brutal images of looting, murder, and torture. <laughs> 